equation cosine 2x equals cosine x algebraically for all values of x and the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 360. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Cosine 2x <coughs> equals cosine x. Now, um, first thing we're going to do is to try to create a uh, a quadratic equation. Okay, we're going to use our identities to create a quadratic equation that hopefully we can solve by factorization. Okay, if you look at those two uh, functions we have here, we have cosine two x and we have cosine x. I could use my um, double angle identities for cosine to express this as a square where the input of a cosine function is just x as opposed to 2x, okay? So you want to recall your double angle identity, um, cosine 2x is equal to 2 cosine square x minus 1. Remember for your um, double angle identities, there are three of them for cosine, okay? So if you look at your reference sheet, let me show it to you real quick. So if you go to your reference sheet for the double angle identities, there are three of them for cosine. So the question is, which of them do we pick to solve the problem? Why did I select this one right here? Well, I'm trying to make the cosine functions uniform, okay? The other ones that are present, this one has a sign that's problematic. This one has a sign that's not good. So I want to have just cosine functions, all right? So let me um, make a substitution here to clearly illustrate what I'm saying. So when I take this cosine 2x out, I replace it with 2 cosine square x minus 1 equals cosine x, okay? Now I'm going to subtract cosine x from both sides of the equation. Why? Well, this is a quadratic equation. You might not see it yet, but it is. Um, I'll, I'll make, make that obvious in a second, okay? So this becomes 2 cosine square. Let's write it in this format so it's, you can really understand what's going on here. So I'm going to write it as 2 cosine x square minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So you see you have a cosine here being squared, and you have a cosine here, minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so how do we solve this quadratic equation? Well, this cosine makes things complicated. It's hard to see this as a quadratic equation with cosine there. It's kind of annoying. So to make it less confusing, let's count a substitution. Okay, so let... Um, how, what do we want to use u? Okay, since x is already taken, let u be cosine x. Okay, so if u is cosine x, check this out. Our equation becomes becomes um, 2u squared minus u minus 1 equals 0. What do you think about this? This looks much better than this monstrosity here with the three, you know, components for the independent variable. So, Focus on this, let's get this um, solved first, and then we go back to the trick portion, okay? So we're converting the trick problem into an algebra problem, we'll solve this, and then we'll go back to trick and use our calculators to finish it out. Now, how do we solve a quadratic equation of this nature? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, we can use factoring by grouping method, hopefully that works here. AC is negative two, B is negative one. In this quadratic, as you can see, a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 1. Okay? a, b, c. So a, c goes on top, b goes on the bottom. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 2 and add to give you negative 1? Uh, we can do 2 and 1. So let's switch my colors here. I'm going to do 2 and 1. Well, in order for the sum to be negative, I have to negate the bigger of the 2. Just check it. Minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 times 1 is negative 2. Perfect. So I'm going to replace the middle term with these two. 
I have to factor by grouping here. Why do I have to factor by grouping? Is because our a is not one, so this is longer than usual. So we have two u squared minus two, append the u next to it, plus one u, just write u, that's good enough, minus one equals zero. Okay, now let's finish this up. We're gonna factor by grouping, so I'm gonna divide it down the center right here. Okay, take a look at the first two terms to the left of your partition. What is the GCF? What can I factor out? I can factor out 2u, and you're left with u minus 1. Okay? Now take a look at the two terms to the right of your partition. What's the GCF? I can take out 1. And then we're left with u minus 1 equals 0. Now, whenever you factor by grouping, if you carry out your factorization process correctly, the quantities in the parentheses must be identical. Is that the case here? Yes, so you're doing good. So we, we factor out the identical terms. <clears throat> you, I'll just change my color here. So you factor out this two like terms, u minus one and u minus one. <clears throat> so you have u minus one times and then what's left on the outside of the two identical quantities are combined into their own nice little parenthesis here, equals zero. Okay? All right, let's keep on going. So we're now going to use the zero product property. We have u minus one set to zero and two u plus one set to zero. To finish this up, you just simply add one to both sides and you have u equals 1. And then here we subtract 1 divided by 2. So subtract 1. Get 2u equals negative 1. And then divide by 2. And then you have u equals negative 1 half. So the question is, are we done? Have we solved the problem? Well, let's go back to the question. What does the question ask us to do? The question asks us to solve this equation for all values of x. We have just found u, so we're not done yet. In order to finish this whole process, we have to we substitute cosine x for u. Okay, so you sub and then we sub and then you solve. Let's do it. So we're going to have, um, let's see. I'm just going to rewrite it here so that nobody gets confused. u equals 1, and then u equals negative 1 half. So when I resubstitute, I have cosine x is equal to 1 since u is cosine x, right? And then this one, I'm just going to also write cosine x is equal to negative 1 half since u is equal to cosine. Okay, so now I, I just have to solve these trig equations. Um, these ones are pretty straightforward to do. We're going to take advantage of our calculators here. You could use your calculator. You can use the unit circle if you have it memorized. Um, or you can use the trig function. I'm going to use the trig function, the graph of a cosine function, to solve this one. Okay, remember we're going from 0 to 360, so we are in the first quadrant. So for this one right here, let me graph my cosine function. Down, down. And you can also use your calculator to do this too. Okay, so I'm going to have cosine, that's pi over 2, that's pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. It's very important to know how to solve these equations um, by hand, just in case you're taking higher math classes like pre-calc or calculus, when you're not allowed the luxury of using a calculator. All right, so that goes my cosine function from 0 to 360. Down. This is 360. This is 180. Okay. All right. So for our interval, let's look at our interval. 360 is excluded because you don't have a line underneath your inequality. So our final point should be an open circle. So the question now is where is this graph? When does it have the output of 1? It has the output of 1 on this line right here, okay, on the maximum. 
So what angular values gives you that output? Zero. It would 360 would have been included had it been we had a line underneath this inequality. But 360 is excluded from the solutions from the domain, so we may not include it in the solution. Okay? So cosine x equals one where when x is equal to zero degrees. Okay? Now this is very easy to do because it's a nice point, but this one is a different story. Okay. Now let me let me replicate uh, replicate my curve for you and show you why this is slightly more complicated. Okay, so I just copied this graph right here. Um, so the maximum for your cosine function is one, the minimum is negative one. We're asking for what input values will give you an output of negative one half. Do you see where negative one half is on this graph? Negative one half is dead in the center between zero and negative one. So we're going to draw this line right here, dead in the center. Bam. Now, what x values generate this output? That what x value right there and that x value right there. So we actually have two answers for the second equation. Okay. So if you have your unit circle memorized, it's easy for you to just calculate it um, to figure it out just by sketching the unit circle. But I'm going to use the calculator because not all of us have the unit circle uh, memorized at all times. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, let me make sure my mode is in degrees because it's always resets itself. I am going to graph the um, function, my cosine function, and I'm, I'm going to use the calculator to help me figure out my results. Okay. All right. Let's graph it. Okay, so that doesn't look good. I'm going to zoom, trig, okay, so zoom, trig, enter. So what it does now, it goes from negative 360 all the way to 360, okay? So let me show that to you. So if you trace zero, oh gosh, what just happened? So let's trace zero, that's zero, and then when you do 360, It's too far out of the domain. Well, let's do 180 halfway, just to illustrate. Okay, so that's 180. It's kind of 360 somewhere here, but it doesn't include that in the in the window. That's a glitch in the calculator. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. So there goes 360. Okay. So this is the window that we were focusing our energy on. Okay. So to help you even see, focus on the relevant area, I'm going to use my zoom box feature to um, capture the only area that we care about in the graph of cosine. We know that its domain is from negative infinity to infinity, but we want to just zero in on the first period, excluding the right end point, mainly 360 degrees, okay? So let's just focus in on this area so that um, you guys can really understand what I'm trying to do here. Enter. Okay, so we have the graph of one period of the cosine function. The question is, at what x values does it intersect with negative one half? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my y. I'm going to graph a negative one half. Let's graph that. Bam. Okay. So now I'm going to use my intersect feature to figure out the x coordinates of the intersection between my cosine curve and this horizontal line at these two values here. Okay. So second function calculate, option number five, first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, just move your cursor to anywhere close to the intersection point, so there you go, press enter, bam, first answer is 120 degrees, so x, wrong color, x equals 120 degrees, we have another answer, right? This is another intersection right here. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Uh, intersect five, first curve, press enter, second curve, press enter. Guess move your cursor to somewhere near the point of intersection. Enter. And your final answer is 240 degrees. So that's 240 degrees. So there goes our solution set. Okay, so the values of x that satisfies the original equation are 0 degrees, 120 degrees, 
and 240 degrees.